Each morning at Grace Bible Church, we have the privilege of remembering Jesus and proclaiming his death for us. We do this by following Jesus' own example and instruction. When each Christian here takes a piece of bread and a cup of juice, these are palpable, touchable, tasteable, physical reminders, physical aids pointing us to remember his sinless body and blood given for us. This morning, we will pay particular attention to how Jesus' death was an expression of love for his people. God loves us. Are you stunned by this? Don't allow familiarity with the truth to keep you from feeling the amazing weight of this truth. Christian, God loves us. We aren't loved by God because we are lovely. No, Ephesians 2 says that while we were by nature children of wrath, living in our world-loving, God-hating, dead ugliness... Ephesians 2, 4, but God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Worship. 1 John 4.10, in this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. These are not just words to be contemplated. This is good news beyond all imagination. Church. All who are his for whom Christ died, God loves us. And in this love, God the Son died in our place, giving us faith, paying for our sins, making us righteous. This is love. Ephesians 5.2, Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Jesus' life and death was physical reality born out of love for us. Jesus loved us and gave himself for us, Christian. No matter what rejection, pain, or difficulty you're facing in this life, this truth must buoy us in trial, drive us to our knees in worship, and it ought to make you cry out spontaneously in thankful prayer. Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom of not the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and inscrutable his ways. And there's more. Revelation 1.5, Jesus loved us and freed us from our sins by his blood. Ephesians 5.25, Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. The night before he went to the cross. In John 13, 1, we get a glimpse into Jesus' heart as he headed to Calvary to die for all who would believe. Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. John three sixteen for God loved the world in this way. He gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. If you have not yet turned to this God, the only true God in repentance and faith, why would you wait? His love is beyond comprehension. And apart from him, you will face only death and wrath that you have stored up in your sin. Children, visitor, doubter, listen to me. This is true. You will die one day 
or Jesus is going to return first. And then what? There's nothing that you can do to save yourself from perishing eternally. But God's love moved him to give his son so that whoever believes, but only those who believe, should not perish, but have eternal life. Christian, don't let yourself sit unmoved by these familiar truths. When the bread and juice comes in a few minutes, if you're not a Christian, if you haven't turned to Jesus in repentance and faith, and if you're not trusting in grace alone, it's not appropriate for you to take the bread and juice in remembrance of this love. It has not been applied to you. But so long as you have breath left, it is offered. Don't delay. Believe and receive this gift. Only then could you look at the cross and truthfully say, that was love for me. But if you won't, just let the bread and juice pass. But please don't leave today without talking to me. One of the elders, somebody you see next to you taking this bread and juice of this about this wonderful news. Finally, Christians, as if the verses we've read together aren't enough to make you cry out in worshipful awe and thanksgiving, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Galatians 2.20. I want you to see this for yourself. Galatians 2, verse 20. So far, the verses that we've reviewed talk about God's love to God's people corporately. All the pronouns were the plural us. But just to guard us from thinking of God's love as some general, not personal love, towards a group of people and not individuals also, not you in particular, read Paul's words here, noticing the first person singular pronoun, me. He says, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. One commentator writes on this verse, this dying is identified as a dying for me. That is, Christ's act on the cross was intensely personal. It's as if he died for Paul alone. John Calvin wrote regarding this, the words for me are very emphatic. It will not be enough for any man to contemplate Christ as having died for only the salvation of the world unless he has experienced the consequences of this death and is enabled to claim it as his own. Every Christian, and only Christians, can say along with Paul, Jesus loved me. Jesus gave himself for me. And if you've been reconciled to God by grace, through faith, you can, you must say with Paul as you take the bread and juice this morning, Jesus loved me. And died for me. Men, please come and serve us. And as they do, Christian, remember the cross. Consider that as Jesus died, he didn't only die for all of us together. But he loved you personally and gave himself for you personally. Worship, remember, proclaim his death together as we look forward to his return. Take the bread and juice on your own as you are prepared.